G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm trialling the Honeypot Hive System and I'm doing it in the tropics with Tetragonula hocking's eye, the native stingless bee that inhabits this area. So this episode, first impressions and predictions. It's the 1st of June 2016. The temperature has been ranging between 19 Celsius minimum and 30 degrees Celsius maximum. And it's a pleasant uh, day today, slightly overcast. I've received my trial honeypot hive and I thought I'd show it to you and we'll go from there. Okay, so as you can see in this video, we've received supers, honey supers, the brood chamber, an entrance chamber, and over here, the styrofoam outer skin. So let's start with what surprised me nicely was the styrofoam outer lid. I'm sure you've seen the videos on the website, so we don't need to go through all this in detail. But, and it's a, a typical design as we've seen before. What's very good about this is it's come with some sort of coating on the outside. I was originally worried about the climate in North Queensland and the tropical climate and how it deteriorates polystyrene. But this coating seems to be uh, there to protect the honeypot hive. My original plan was to get timber and glue it over the top and sides, all over, as a form of protection against the North Queensland weather. I'm not now not going to do that. I'm going to use this hive as is to see how this protective coating goes. It looks good, seems very durable, and looks nice just on its own. So I'm just going to leave it as is. So. What did we receive in terms of the actual hive itself? Well, we'll start with the actual honey pots. And as you can see here, whoa, there they go. I've got uh, one, well, you can count. But more importantly, as you look here, there's different sizes I've got. And obviously this is part of the trial that I'm doing. So we've got a small size, as you can see there. We've got a nice medium, or was that the large size? Uh, no, that's the medium size. And we've even got large size. So, obviously I'm trialling these to see which size Hocking's Eye will prefer when using these as honey supers. Now my original plan was to put one of these down the bottom for a pollen super because in the original design of the hive it was a very narrow entry. So let's get on to that and see why I'm not going to do that. So I've been sent this section here which is obviously the entry and brood chamber. What's nice about the new entry, it's actually a lot taller. And that was my concern because in the Hocking's Eye Hive, they tend to put a lot of pollen at the entry. And yes, this is a, one of my typical hives and it's actually got bees flying in and out at the moment. So this entry looks good. It's a nice deep entry, which means they can store a, a fair amount of pollen in there. Well, try that again. In there. Break it open and we can see some pollen cells ready to go, two entries if you want to do an induction. And the designers put in a, if you like, a support, obviously for the bees to use to bridge across and fill any areas in here with extra pollen cells. So overall, that negates me, if necessary, for adding extra pollen or using the honey pot 
as an extra layer to get extra pollen cells. It's not a problem, however, if I do need to do that, because with this modular design, I can just grab a pollen pot, if they're filling this up too much, add it to the top, and then put the brood chamber on top of that. So the great thing about the modular design is I can actually add to that if that's not big enough. So that's great. So we'll put that up there. The other thing that came was the brood chamber. And the brood chamber is different to the design on the web. So you can picture that inside the brood chamber. And the brood chamber bottom just has a hole in the bottom like that. So obviously that's designed as scaffolding to allow the native bees to use that. I've got a little bit of a problem in how I'm going to fit brood into there and that, but we'll discuss that in another video. This is the actual design and this is what I've got. And as I'm trialing this hive as is, I am not going to make much modifications to the initial design because we want to get feedback on does this work or not and if not why not okay let's look at an area so this is a typical native beehive that i have that i have here in north queensland two brood chambers separated by the honey super size of this internally is about 160 by 130 millimeters by 100 high so you've got 100 200 300 high so the space we got here how does that compare to the space in this hive well let's stack them together and see so you can have a look yourself if i put these bits of wood here <laughs> These bits of wood roughly work out to the internal dimensions of the box. So we can see how it looks, the internal dimensions to this. So let's look at the brood chamber. Well, once we put the brood chamber and the... Well, let's do it this way to even be better. As the bees more likely stack their pollen at the entrance, either this way or this way. So as you can see, that brood box is rather small. In fact, I would say a little too small. But the great thing about native bees is they adapt to the size of the chamber. So if I want a small hive, I'm sure the bees will adapt to that. The great thing about being modular is I am assuming that down the line I can order an extra brood box, or in this case, if I'm looking carefully at this, I could possibly order one, two brood boxes as the hive expands. And no doubt, I'd be able to order a bit of foam and the front to match the two brood box height and then add it to here. So when I order the extra boxes, I hopefully should be able to order the foam insert as well, just to be able to sit in there add to the top of that and expand my hive as we go. But this brood box as it sits here now is perfectly okay to start a hive off. But you can see how the volume is different. I'll get on to predictions in a minute because you'll understand why we need extra brood. Space that is. What about the supers we got there? Is that enough supers? for storing honey in, seems a lot. This box up here is full to the brim with honey and I empty that once a year. So the bees are capable of filling that super up. So that's the same volume as down here. So how does this stack up? One, two, now you notice I've got space in the front of here, space at the top of here. So overall, oh, I'm about two-thirds full. Fine. The reason I've got this depth of space is particularly, is only because I'm a bit lazy. I just want to harvest once a year. 
The great thing about this method is I can harvest these when I feel like it. So I'm not concerned about the space that I'm missing on this hive design. That's more than enough, and I'm glad I've got eight to play with. I'm sure the bees will adapt to the different sizes that we've got here and just build the pots appropriate to the size. But again, this is part of the trial and to see how it goes. Finally, let's look at predictions. What do I think is going to happen with our little hive design here? Let's just move these out of the way for the moment. Now, I'm sure you've seen the videos from down south where the main nest is a, is a cylindrical column up the centre of the hive. Now, Hocking's eyes in the tropics don't do that because we get temperatures over 40 degrees out this way. And that design would just cook the bees in the beehive. So what Hocking's eye do up here is they build it a bit like a cup shape. So they'll come down here, they'll cover the total bottom of this and then run it up the side here. And there'll be a bit of an air gap left in here. That air gap is to allow for heat and air, heat to dis dissipate and air circulation. So it's not a compact cylinder that this hive is designed for. So what do I predict? Early on, the actual hive design will be fine. The bees will fill up our bottom pot and they'll certainly start building a nest in there. Plenty of room for that. They'll certainly have no trouble probably filling up one, two, probably three of these based on a proportion of two thirds brood size to one third honey super. So if you're looking at that, about three of those, no trouble filling that up. But once they get this full, they've got a problem of space. That's the first problem. And also of dissipating the heat that builds up inside the hive. So what I predict they're going to do is, is they're going to build up the side of the wall and up that central scaffolding, but they're going to leave one side actually open to allow air to flow up. This is what I predict they're going to do. They're going to concentrate on one side and leave the other side free. No doubt when this box fills up, I'm going to make a request for an extra box or two to see how they go up the, up the uh, honey pot hive. Now, I could predict that if I put extra boxes on, they will just run it up the side, taking up, say, half to three quarters of the box right up and to allow air to flow over the brood and they will then fill extra honey supers. So there you have it. My first impressions, I'm looking forward to experimenting on this. Next video will be on the procedures I'm going to use tomorrow to start this hive off.